you think of Squaresoft, you generally don't think of overhead action adventure games. Sure, Secret of Mana was a huge hit that turned a lot of heads back in the day, but that was pretty unique for them, and it was still an RPG. They were much more well known for their classic RPGs, Final Fantasy, Romancing Saga, and other games. Even titles they published but didn't develop like Breath of Fire, Front Mission, and Treasure Hunter G were much more traditional RPG oriented. Even so, they broke this pattern in 1993 with Alkahest, an overhead action adventure dungeon crawler developed by HAL Laboratory. Square published the game, but it was only released in Japan on the Super Famicom. Thankfully, as in many titles I cover, a fully translated English patch was released in 2002 to make it easily playable for North American gamers. And since I never originally played it on the Super Famicom, this is the way I first experienced it. Unlike traditional RPGs with heaps and heaps of dialogue, there isn't as much text here, and most of the storyline sequences play out pretty quickly. Nevertheless, the patch does a great job at making this one fully playable. I'll leave a link to the translation patch in the description below. Alkahest borrows some characteristics from games that came before it, but is completely different in other ways as well. It's structured into eight total stages, and plays much more like a fast-paced arcade game than most console action-adventure titles. It actually plays quite a bit different than it looks, if that makes any sense. Your main weapon is your sword, which you can use to hack away at enemies. You can also hold down the attack button to charge up your sword for a special attack. Outside of your normal attack, you also have SP, otherwise known as special points, to execute companion attacks. And speaking of companions, that's one of the coolest parts of Alkahest. Throughout your adventure, you can acquire various companions that help you fight your way through dungeons. These companions follow you around and do standard attacks based on AI, but you can also press X to unleash a screen-wide attack at the expense of SP. There are five different companions in total, each with different abilities. For instance, Garstein the Magician fires magical bolts at enemies and can do a giant explosion special attack, and Sirius is a knight who attacks with his flail. The last companion, Nevis, can even transform into an actual dragon and breathes fire on all enemies on the screen. Now that is pretty sweet. As you progress, you also gain access to new sword attacks that consume MP, and you can toggle between them with the L and R buttons. For instance, the Guardian of Fire gives you the ability to split into three and execute a series of powerful sword stabs. The Guardian of Water, on the other hand, gives you the ability to perform a spinning attack that fires off magical sparks in all directions. There's a fun assortment of abilities to play with, and quickly pressing a directional button twice makes you dash. That's a nice touch too. The story behind this whole monstrosity is pretty simple. Long ago, a legendary swordsman slew an evil demon god named Alkahest and successfully sealed it away. A thousand years later, a new demon tribe led by Emperor Babylon plans to conquer the world with an imperial army and revive Alkahest. You play the role of Alan, an average guy who happens to be minding his own business when he's chased down by two weird-looking lizard creatures. Just as he's cornered, he's miraculously saved by a guardian and given a sword and shield. As you soon learn, he turns out to be, well, you guessed it, the chosen one to defeat Alkahest and save the world. But he won't do it alone. He has to seek out and enlist the four elemental guardians to help him. Oddly enough, Alkahest gives the appearance of having several RPG elements, what with the experience gauge in the upper left hand corner of the screen and all, but it really isn't an RPG. What shows as experience and next is really just a way to illustrate your progress toward an additional continue, which will help you through the game if you die. So Alkahest doesn't use an RPG leveling system or anything like that. The experience points are more like a traditional arcade's points meter. Alkahest is a pretty short game, and can be beaten in about 4 hours, but there are plenty of areas to explore. There really aren't many puzzles to solve though, and many of the areas are like mazes that you do have to run around in various directions to find keys to proceed. Most of the bosses are pretty sweet, even from the start. Look at this fierce looking fiery armor dude. There's actually some pretty cool design here. 
The story is definitely cheesy at times, but the dark boss designs aren't. They look sinister and add the perfect type of medieval flavor. Using your companions and special attacks to overcome these guys is where the game's fun truly lies, and there isn't a set way to defeat each one. The only major problem I see is the enemy hit detection is pretty bad. Sometimes it's hard to see where you are in relation to enemies, and swinging your sword in what seems to be the direction of the enemy doesn't always work. You can get a better feel for it as you put more time into the game, but it operates a little like Secret of Mana and Secret of Evermore in this way. The soundtrack gives you about two dozen fun songs that are an upbeat arcade style, definitely different from what you'll find in other SNES action-adventure games. I was pleased with it throughout, and there's enough variety for the various locations so you aren't hearing the same ones over and over like some other SNES titles. I'm actually pretty surprised Squaresoft decided against localizing this one in North America. After all, the title shared some similarities with games like The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past, Illusion of Gaia, and Secret of Mana, all of which did very well here. It isn't like there is a ton of text to translate like in their flagship RPG games, so it's not like it would have been a huge burden on staff. I guess they felt the game's arcade style wouldn't work too well on console over here, but I think that was a mistake. I know my friends and I would have enjoyed this one a lot. So yeah, Alkahust is a fantastic game that's totally overlooked and unappreciated. It uses a lot of fun concepts that fans of action-adventure and RPG games will appreciate, but still stands out in its own way. It's definitely on the short side, and some of the hit detection is frustrating, but it makes up for these things in so many other ways. It also throws a bunch of challenges your way, so it's not like it's a cakewalk or anything like that. If you like games like Arcus Odyssey, Wizard Fire, the Soul Blazer series, and even Magic Sword, I think this one will be right up your alley. It's a fun plug and play game that doesn't require too much thought or effort. It's probably one of the most overshadowed Squaresoft published titles of all time. But now, I want to hear from you. If you played Alkahest, what did you like best about it? If you haven't, what makes you want to give it a try? Let me know in the comments below. Please like, subscribe, and click the bell below for more retro gaming content, and please join my Discord community linked in the description. Also, please consider supporting my channel via YouTube's Join feature to receive member exclusives, such as advanced videos and complete video transcripts.